Is it fair to say that Disney animated movies were a part of all of our childhoods? I think it is. Even if you didn't grow up watching a bunch of them, you definitely have seen at least one or two as a kid. Perhaps it was only when you were really little, only when you were a kid, or perhaps you still even watch them now. Whatever it may be, as a kid we mostly enjoyed the music and the iconic characters. As adults, you may be focused more on the beautiful artwork in a lot of them, and of course, the morals they want to deliver within them. And that's partly what I enjoy nowadays about them. Even if it wasn't as obvious to me as a kid, the movies do have some great moralities embedded into them. Whether hammered in or delicately placed, there were some very good ones and it's great to know that they were there. And that's why for this video, I could post a small list of some of the best ones that I remember from these movies. Keep in mind that this is just an opinionated list, so these will be the most impactful to me personally, and ones for movies I remember fondly. Also, I will be including Pixar movies in this too, so heads up on that, it won't be 100% Disney-only classics. So, let's get right into it, shall we? Number 5. Inner Beauty, Beauty and the Beast. A classic tale as old as time, damn it, it's too hard not to sing. But it really is a magnificent story about two mismatched characters coming together as a loving couple. And the moral that seems to be pushed in this story, most of all, is that no matter how unappealing you may appear to be on the outside, you can still be loved by someone who will value your character. A really important message to get across, especially since the media loves to portray those worthy of love and acclaim as being astonishingly beautiful all the time. It's not as black and white as, you're beautiful, you'll get the girl, and you're hideous, what girl would ever date you? You can be physically attractive, but be a terrible person, as portrayed in the very beginning where the story of the prince is told. The prince, despite being handsome and wealthy, is truly an ugly person on the inside, and full of selfishness and pride. The old lady may not be the best looking, but she still offers him a rose as a gift, showing that she has a good heart. As punishment, the old lady turns beautiful, revealing her inner beauty, and transforms the prince into the inward version of himself, a hideous, frightening beast. Now, when it comes to the rest of the story, some people are kind of torn on the moral throughout, and how it's flawed in many aspects. Like, for example, yes, it does sort of come off as Belle having Stockholm Syndrome. Also, the only way to break the curse is if the Beast falls in love with Belle, and she loves him back. Which kind of muddles the moral a little bit in my opinion, because wasn't the punishment due to the Prince not showing compassion himself? Wouldn't showing love and compassion for Belle be enough? There is quite a few plot holes in the story, but it doesn't really take too much away from the message, and that is to always love the people around you for who they are, and not for how they look. Number 4. Learning from the Past, The Lion King Alright, let's talk about just about every Disney fan's favorite film, which I'm sorry is not really mine. I mean, I like it just fine, but anyways, let's stay focused. In this film, heavily inspired by Hamlet, Simba's next in line for the throne, but things change when his uncle Scar kills Simba's father, ruining his chances. Now, one of the biggest morals of the movie is how Simba copes with this devastating loss, and that is to, well, kind of just forget about it. Yeah, that whole Hakuna Matata thing isn't as cheery as it's portrayed, basically saying stop worrying about your dumb old dead dad. Forget about how your evil uncle is running things back home now. Forget about what happened and live in the present. Which, in a way, is a good message, but it's made clear in the film that Timon and Pumbaa don't exactly teach Simba this lesson the right way exactly. The one who does expand on this topic is Rafiki, who tells Simba that his father lives in him always and can never truly leave him. So while it's not best to dwell on the past, you can't just wipe it from your mind entirely either. Both extremes can be unhealthy. As Rafiki demonstrates by slapping Simba with his staff, you can either run from the past and leave it behind you, or learn from the past and use it to strive for a better future. And honestly, that's something many people can relate to. People who go through the biggest hardships should keep this message at heart. It just might help them move forward. Number 3. What is easy versus what is right. Toy Story 2. While many people tend to refer to this movie as the least of the Toy Story trilogy, I think it kind of gets a bum rap in that regard, as sometimes it means it's not really seen as interesting or deep. I find a lot of value in this film for several reasons, one of which is the dilemma that Woody faces in this one. After discovering that he's a rare collector's item along with his very own Roundup gang, Woody is faced with two choices, one of which could change his life for the better. He can be admired by children all around the world forever in a museum, or he could go back home with Andy and face the inevitable event where he grows up and no longer wants anything to do with him. While going to the museum would benefit him in a big way, he realizes he is Andy's toy 
and he can't just abandon someone he has a deep connection with. Therefore, he is conflicted with the easy thing and the right thing, which a lot of people in real life face at different points in their lives. A very relatable moral that is not entirely on the surface of this movie, but is still there to appreciate. Number 2. Overprotective Parenting – Finding Nemo Okay, okay, it might not be the only lesson taught in this movie, but it definitely is the most powerful to me. After Marlin loses 99% of his family to a vicious barracuda, he promises that nothing bad will ever happen to his last surviving child, Nemo, who is born with a stubby fin. But as a result of Marlin's loss, he, he goes a bit overboard with his parenting, and doesn't allow Nemo the right amount of freedom, nor trust Nemo's judgment. This of course drives Nemo away, and he ends up being captured by scuba divers. Marlin ends up going on a long, perilous journey with his newfound friend Dory to find him, and during that time, a helpful sea turtle named Crush teaches him the importance of not having too much of a stronghold on your children, as it can hold them back and affect how they grow. It's a very interesting topic for a Disney kids movie to tackle, especially since it's more for the kids' parents. It's especially powerful at the end when Nemo is the only one who can save Dory and a school of fish from being captured, and Marlin has to trust Nemo that he'll make it out just fine, and if something happens, then it's not entirely his fault. Also, in a way, it also sends out a message of not underestimating a child's handicap too much, which is pretty cool. I really enjoy Pixar putting in this moral, so there's even more to look back on with this film. And finally, number one. Coping with loss. Up. Sure, a lot of Disney movies have covered this topic before and after this film, but in my opinion, Up does it the most emotionally impactful way out of all of them. For those who have seen Up, you probably remember one part of the movie in particular, and that was one of the most heart-wrenching scenes a Disney movie could ever put out, where it shows Carl Fredrickson and his wife Ellie as they live a happy married life before Ellie passes away before Carl and leaves their lifelong dream unfulfilled. I'm sure a good percentage of you guys had at least a tear fall after seeing that. I was on the verge of sobbing. Throughout the movie, it's shown that Carl is not taking his loss well at all, as he goes through the usual negative attributes of losing a loved one, shutting the world out entirely, refusing to make new friends, possibly in fear of losing them too, having obsessive attachments to things the deceased left behind, which in this case is Carl and Ellie's house. He struggles with all his strength to get the house over to Paradise Falls so he can complete the adventure for him and his wife. It really is a sad thing to witness. But towards the movie's end, Carl comes across Ellie's adventure scrapbook and discovers she wrote in it while on her deathbed. She wrote to her husband that the true adventure all along was sharing her long life with Carl, and her final wish? For Carl to find a new adventure to go on, to enjoy life, and not to shut out the world. If that doesn't hit home for just about everybody, I don't know what does. This is something everyone goes through when it comes to coping with the devastating loss, and it's just so well portrayed in this film. No matter how hard it was to lose someone you cared for deeply, it's important that it doesn't keep you from moving forward and living life to its fullest. Your lost loved ones will always be with you in spirit, and will help you heal. So, I thank you guys for watching this countdown. Doing this made me realize just how much I miss doing videos like this, where I get to share my thoughts in the form of a list video. If you have any Disney morals you held on tightly to from your past, please feel free to discuss them in the comments. I may or may not do a part 2 to this, since there are more morals that touch me in other Disney classics, but didn't make the list. But for now, I hope you enjoy my insight. Feel free to subscribe to my channel or follow me on Twitter at MasterDK913. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you have a magical evening.